Yeah, Roots, uh, in the end, a very good result. Excellent. Um, <clears throat> I think our performances have been quite good. We learnt a lot from our last game against MacArthur where you know, we, we had about 50 entries into their box and came away with a, a loss. So, you know, this league, you, you've, you've got to got to be smarter um, in certain moments, away from home, you know, change the team up somewhat as well. Um, we know how they play, they're a very good side, particularly at home. So two, two things that really stick out for mine was, one, the win, obviously, um, but in the manner, coming back from behind, away from home, and winning away from home, I think was massive for the mentality of this group. Um, and that's what we're trying to change here. Um, and, and so, it takes time, as you know, um, but the messages are getting through and they're a really good bunch of players um, who, who want to learn and want to get better. And, and one main thing that I've been speaking about was, was the mentality, you know, making sure that, uh, you know, if we do go a, a goal down and it happens, that we're able to pick ourselves back up and stay positive and, and play our football and play our game. And like I said, away from home, not many teams would come here and get a result, but to do it when you're one nil down, it was even more impressive. And the way they fought towards the end, when I went to a back five, just to secure things, because Adelaide is a team that puts in a lot of crosses, more than any other, other team in the competition. So having an extra player there was great. Mark Gush was great after, after they conceded that first goal as well. So I'm really happy for him too. You've got him on Sunday and you're now within touching distance of the top six. So four day turnaround, but now you've beaten them. Do you think got the upper hand psychologically or, or is it just completely start from scratch again? No, you don't start from scratch. I think it's important to, when you know you're playing in a, a home and away kind of tie, um, which is quite unique, we needed to, to, to get first, you know, past the first hurdle and that was playing away from home and, and, and putting in a good performance and a good shift. You know, I rested a few players today. They've been playing a lot of football in, in Hemed, Agawa and, and Traore, very experienced players. So the gamble paid off um, and, and you know, we've got personnel to, to come back in front of our home fans who are building momentum themselves and, and I'm really glad for them because we do need them and, and, we, and it showed when we played against uh, Sydney FC in the derby just how important they were for us. So we're hoping that they'll come back and give, give us an extra boost knowing it's a four day turnaround as well and, and I'm sure that um, the players would have taken a lot out to, tonight knowing that irrespective they can win the game. Mark, obviously you talked about shifting um, to a back five at the end there to shore things up. We've seen Adelaide scoring so late so often. Obviously you're conscious of that. Yes. But yes. the calmness and composure from your team in yep. the last 10 minutes as well means something you've Fantastic. Seen. Yeah, absolutely. You need to... You know, one thing in this country as well, particularly with our young players who come through the system, is is, under, is game awareness and understanding situations in a match. It happens all over the world, you know, and, 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 and I'm, I'm big on on that, those kind of things and, you know, whether it's a tactical change or a switch and knowing that they've scored so many goals late, part of my plan, and you've got a whole lot of plans depending on how the game goes and was that, you know, we want, I wanted to do something like that depending on what the result was, clearly and obviously, but, um, you know, like I said, it worked and, and you know, having, having that, uh, those game smarts about you, knowing how to see a game out as well, away from home is even more important um, and we did that and I thought, they were very, very calm as well, like you mentioned. And, um, you know, we've got some young players in that team too who would have learnt a lot from that. And that's what it is right now. It's a learning for all of them. Even young Philip Kankar, who is looking a bit shaky in that first half. And, you know, he, I, had, I was going to be very closely monitoring him in the second half, thinking, is he going to be able to, as such a young kid, he was a bit, little, bit, little bit flustered and giving the ball away, got a yellow card. And, you know, the, the, the big boy up front was giving him a, a few problems, you know, and just little things like, he, no need to, to get into a, a holding match with him. You know, the big guys, you normally just step, step in front of them. And, and, and that's learning for, for young Philip. And I don't even want to take him off because I think it's great for him to, to keep learning and, and improve. And I had a chat with him um, at half time, you know, in a nice way, but he's a good kid and, and he wants to make amends. And yeah, so he, he was good as well, you know, because young kids could easily go either way. But we spoke about it, you know, told him what, what he needs to do, just calm down. You know, there was nothing, untoward because he's shown that he can do it so many times but there's a lot of them you know I thought you know Tate Russell was good he hasn't played a lot of, until before I came and Akalina hasn't played until until now for a number of games as well you know everyone put their hand up and, and put a shift in Bernie Abini hasn't started for a long time you know and a lot of them did themselves uh, a lot of justice but like you said um, I'm really happy that we we're able to see out the result and it was uh, a bit of maturity on our behalf and something that we're going to 
continue to build. Did you want to tell Philip that they've given him the goal and did you have to break the news to Tommy as well? Yeah, the funny one was just before that, you know, sometimes on the sideline you get a bit of a, a gut feel about something. I had a feeling that we were going to get something out of that one. I don't know why. I don't, I don't always say it, but, you know, I said to Tommy, this is your chance. Oh, I've got a feeling you're going to get something. And so as soon as it happened, I thought it was Tommy because the guys on the bench were telling me it was Tommy. I couldn't really see. There's a lot of, a lot of, a lot of bodies there. So, and the bench was going, fuck, you know, you, you've made a big call there. But then Tommy, I said, Tommy, I told you. He goes, it wasn't me. It was Philip, right? I go, you sure? And um, it doesn't really matter. And I'm really happy for Philip. Like I said, his first half performance wasn't his greatest, but he's able to keep a clean sheet in the second half and help the team keep a clean sheet in the second half and, and, and gets, gets the winner. So really happy for him along with all, all, the, all the rest of them.